sunshine. Oh, in the last few days, it's been wonderful. Um, I just want to start off by saying how sad it's been in the world today with what's happening in, in Ukraine. And I don't know what the solution is when you're dealing with you know, reasonable people, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we send our all our best to the people of Ukraine and hope, sincerely hope that it ends sooner rather than later. And, and with that, I'd like to start with uh, the Aboriginal acknowledgement. And I'd like to acknowledge that the land of which we are gathered is the traditional territory of the Tanaha, Silix, and Sinex peoples, and is home to Métis and many diverse Aboriginal persons. We honour the connection to the land and the rivers and respect the importance of the environment to our strength as a community. And with that, I'd like a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Nina, Second. thank you very much. All in favour? Now, if you have a question, you have a question, um, you have to fire on your um, computer as quickly as possible. So make sure you know where that little button is there on your computer. All right, so the, I'd like a motion to to adopt the minutes of the February 9th, 2022 meeting, please. So move. Um, Jane, all in favor? Thank you. Business arising, and the first item on the agenda so far is 4A, Diversity Advisory Committee. Um, that's at the top of the list. Who's speaking to that? Diversity Advisory? Yeah. Oops, sorry, <coughs> some notes on yeah. something later on, but exactly. Yeah. Um, we, we did have our third official um, stakeholder meeting, I guess. Uh, it's the, uh, I'm not sure what exactly to call them, but the setup committee. Uh, and that was uh, yesterday. Yesterday. And uh, basically, the, the, it was with Dr. Magasa, the, con the consultant, and we worked on finalizing the uh, Diversity Advisory Committee's mandate, the mission statement, um, commitment of the committee members. So we felt it was important to identify kind of what the uh, expectations and commitments of people who will eventually be on the committee so we can make sure they understand that before they commit to doing it and uh, had uh, some discussions on the terms of reference that would be employed. Um, as always, uh, those meetings, you know, they were, it was very good, but it was uh, pretty rushed. Uh, there wasn't as much time for some of the discussions as there probably should have been. But at the same time, um, using Dr. Magasa's time uh, to sit there while we're, people are in breakout rooms and discussing things isn't the best use of time either. So I've asked for uh, another meeting to be set up as soon as possible for the for the uh, setup committee members to come back and and just have some further discussions on some of those things and get you know a, a fair chance or a fair amount of time to get all their ideas and concerns out or ideas and suggestions out and then um, uh, Barb uh, Vincent is going to help with um, facilitating that and probably doing some uh, the note taking and compiling what all the ideas and stuff are to send back to Dr. Magasa to sort of work into the uh, the pre-meeting documents that he sends out before the meeting so that we can kind of be as best prepared and ready to move on to the next stage of things. Um, as I said, uh, it, it's nice to utilize his time accordingly. Yeah. So uh, I think having a few side meetings is going to help be prepared and, and get things accomplished a little bit quicker there. So uh, I think it's moving along well. We're making a lot of headway, but as I said, I think with a little bit of additional side meetings with just the committee members to finalize some of those things. We should be well on our way to moving past uh, the setup phase and then going towards identifying who the appropriate members of the committee are to, to move it forward. Good. Any questions? Hopefully Liz and uh, Sue, you can hear us OK. Yep. Questions from the floor? No. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good, uh, good suggestions. Um, the next uh, was discussion points. Um, and you can see those on your agenda there for um, specific uh, committees and so forth. And dates, current dates, I guess, what we're looking for here for planning and budget, etc. Well, we had. Uh to look at the terms of reference right. for the various committees, and yeah. we were all given 
tasks. The char, char, yeah. To, to tie it down. So we've done that. So now we just need to discuss Firm them, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And that's the like, three committees here that you're. Yeah. Like one of the things I noticed was that uh, some of the terms of reference that say that the the document would be reviewed annually and others don't say as required and some don't even mention it. So mm -hmm. we need to decide what is it, right? Like, and then I think it should be consistent. One, you know, whatever one committee does, it should be. So if we say refuse a, you know, review as needed, then that's what it should say. But if we want to put a timeline, that's what I think or to make it change. Yeah. So what are you recommending that we? No, I'm not. I'm just saying that's the discussion. Yeah. Up to the mm -hmm. what, what I'll, I'll recommend, recommend that every committee TOR has to be reviewed every year. I think that should be standard with every committee. At the least, yeah. So it could be the very first time that they convene the committee. They look at the terms. Because mm -hmm. you know sure. we might be meeting at different times of the year, right? Sure. That's a motion you're putting forward, sir. Then I'm hearing. Yes, do we need to have a motion for that? Probably not. I mean, I uh, if so. it's in it, terms of reference, that's yeah. fine. That the, just added to I think it's once the terms of references are uh, uh, finalized, we have to accept them yeah, through yeah. a motion. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, oh, I think the I think the other question too is that on some of them it says this board or this committee will meet twice a year. So should we say like the commendations committee is meeting February and October, like just assigning months to them so that the year doesn't go by and somebody's like, oops, we haven't met twice. Yeah, and that will come up on our action list yeah. then automatically. So some of us are hard of hearing, yeah. so if, Liz, yeah, you have to speak, speak up, up a bit. Yeah, it's our side here to turn it. Volume up yeah. Sorry, do you need me to repeat? Uh, I, yeah, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry, Liz. We're just trying to fix the volume for you. So hang on a second, Liz. Oh, yeah, that's um. Okay. Is the same speakers for both? No. Should be. No, but no. So one is It's a 61. Yeah, yours is at 55, and the other one's well, at 27. Right? They look to be connected, but Sue's is far louder than. Her, so when you put yeah, one down. No, nope. probably gonna have to. No, it's getting going down. <laughs> you get to be on camera. No. Yeah. <laughs> Say hi, Sue. Mm -hmm. yeah. There we that's go. Better. Yeah, that's better. Can you see something, Liz? Can you hear me better now? Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Perfect. I was I was just saying that in some of the terms of reference, it's laying out how often the committees should meet. So. Um, for the commendations, it's twice a year. So I'm wondering if we should assign a month, like those months to those committees so that it's automatically going to happen as opposed to having the year go by and us realizing we haven't met twice. Yeah, I agree. And then we can, it'll come up automatically from our Shiloh, it'll automatically come up for that meeting that, that you know, now's right. the time to, yeah. to do it. So yeah, it's easy enough. We want to select a, a month for each one, fair enough, you know, the week that it comes up automatically. Well, the finance committee, like it goes with the budget, right? Like right, so November, so, I know November is important. So you have so, September, October, prior to November, mm -hmm. the November budget meeting, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would have to be recorded and come up on. So, yes. Yeah, but we have we had a concern about that with the HR committee because since our primary responsibility is the review of the chief constable, we want to make sure that there are touch points during the year. But um, I don't know, maybe we should just decide how many because in that case, I don't think we want to specifically say which months it should be or, or how, you know, maybe not even how often. Um, but I don't think we should um you know uh, scream up to the review period without having had any conversations with the chief during the previous year uh, you know just to mark progress and discuss you know where where we're at with things and how he feels about things how the committee feels about things and so on so i i'm looking for somebody's suggestion i i so just that would be uh, that could be under ongoing right that it could be in the action list um, it, it could. Um, I, I just so don't know what the appropriate uh, number of times per year is to have those conversations. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. 
So on another board that, that I sit on, uh, we have scheduled for that sort of thing every, every three months. And then when that date arrives, if there's nothing to discuss, then they just cancel the meeting, that particular meeting, but it's automatically set to the next three months yeah. and the next three months. So, but it's, it's the terms of reference says that you'll meet every three every months. Three months. Yeah. But you can just say the meeting is canceled. It can be a part of this meeting. Mm -hmm. Anyway, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so that's how well, we no, handle it. No, it has to be totally separate from the board meetings. Yeah. It has oh, to yeah. be a, a meeting between the HR committee and the chief specifically yeah. to talk about performance. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, but the timing could be discussed here, yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah. I thought yeah. that at the board meeting. Well, why don't, okay, we, so why don't we make it every once a quarter then? Once a quarter, yeah. Okay. And you can just cancel it. There's nothing to yeah, discuss. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, Shiloh, okay. let that be part of the schedule. Makes sense maybe to be uh, scheduled around the um, annual. What I mean, we recently. Um, how long ago was it that? Yeah, you we did were the off we probation did the and review in October, Jane. Yeah. Thank you. So. It makes sense that we like that's if that's the annual review, then we back it up by three months. Mm -hmm. That's on. Yeah. But we always have the clause or at the call of the yeah. chair. Yeah. Yeah. So if you think it's an appropriate time, then the chair just calls the meeting. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not just this chief, right? Like so it's October this time, but next time it might be some other month. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 I know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so Chief Fisher, I think we're due for a meeting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, I was kind of thinking if if it started on my anniversary dates, which was actually a week ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good months, idea. And that puts one just before summer starts, one yeah. early in the fall, and one in December. They're kind yeah. of good maybe good dates. Happy, well, happy anniversary. Yeah. When you're done. Yes, we have to stay. Raj is trying to muscle me out. So. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, 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 no. It's less likely you go out now that Raj is here, so exactly. that you're not alone, I would suspect. But yeah. <laughs> And I yeah, so I here. definitely think we should schedule one for this month because it's at least three months since the last time we discussed performance. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see yeah. if we can squeeze that in. <laughs> Anything else on that HR? There were a couple of things, um, Jane, if you have something else, um, by all means chime in, but there were a couple of things that I'd like to add under duties and responsibilities that came from the drafts that um, Shiloh uh, circulated to us. One of them was to annually review succession plans for the chief constable and senior executive staff. A second one was to annually review uh, the internal demographics to ensure progress towards building a diverse workforce, uh, which reflects the makeup of the community. Um, they're, they're pretty much things that we would pay attention to anyway, but I think they should be explicit in the committee's responsibilities. Uh, and then one that I had a question about, um, it's, I'm going to read this to you, and, and I don't think it's relevant for us, but um, let me know what you think. The exempt compensation policy of the NPD generally follows that of the city. I assume that that's true. Where unique compensation arrangements are developed for exempt employees of the board, these will be reviewed by the committee. I don't know if that happens or if it should happen. Um, since we have only one official employee who is yeah. the chief constable, yeah. I, I think it's kind of irrelevant. What what do others think? Yeah, I would. I would agree with you. I mean, that's the responsibility of the chief constable. Once you once you get past him, it's not the board's. Yeah. Yeah. Not the board's responsibility. Yeah. I agree with that's how it should be, but I think we were told under the police act that all of these people are employees, not just the chief. I seem to remember that in the act. 
I think that's I said, too well, remember us remember how we had to uh, to uh, hire the staff sergeant and we went through the whole process mm -hmm. and I was surprised I said why are we hiring a staff mm -hmm. sergeant that's the chief's job yeah. you know but we did we went through this whole process mm -hmm. because we were told that they're all our employees not just the chief so I'm just wondering if we're contravening the act or something, um, which I disagree with, by the way. I think this is the way it should be. Did you Chief, well, in, in, in some respects, and I, that's come up recently, I, I think there probably is some value in in doing that just because, um, you know, uh, all the associations, all the other um, uh, employees of the police department uh, have that same sort of uh, courtesy, if you want to call it that, of being uh, assessed against other police departments and that like work gets like pay and I, and I think that uh, that's going to be a strong um, discussion coming up during negotiations for the rest of the department so uh, every other department in the in the province ties the chief salary uh, to some level of the first class constable salary so you know I do think that's unique here that, that is not done that way. And I think it does create some issues at times as far as uh, retention and attracting uh, new um, people to the department. Uh, so I, I think it's worth looking at. Um, doesn't necessarily mean things will change, but uh, it, it's the only, as I said, it's kind of unique here where it's the only department that calculates uh, compensation on a, at a different uh, mannerism than every other department in the province and in the country, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. And I would I would think, um, Chief, that perhaps it would be important for you to, I mean, I don't want to add to your tasks, but to write something up that we can discuss with Joanna and decide whether or not we want to change that method of calculating exempt positions. I can, because historically that's, it's been that way here. It was, and I, and I'm, Actually, we was going to ask Joanna if there was some rationale of why it was changed about five years ago, four or five years ago. Tonight. So, come tonight. Yes, we could ask her later on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> let's um, let's not include that for the moment in the terms of reference for the HR committee. But we we should pursue that and decide which way we want to go um, as a board with Joanna's advice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I would like to have that clarified whether the, they're all employees of the board or just the chief. I believe I, you're I, correct, Am, but I don't believe we have any agency over anyone but the chief. Yeah, like, no. Theoretically, they are all employees of the board, but we yeah. have designated the chief as our representative to handle everything below yeah. his level. So maybe the wording, you know, where you're suggesting the wording that says, and has no role with respect to any other personnel issues. We might have to change that to an advisory role, a supervisory role, or something like that, mm -hmm. rather than to say no role. So, well, so I, don't, I don't think we have any supervisory role at all. Advisory, possibly. Advisory, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe Just, at the discretion of the chief. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'd like to say advisory and supportive role. Mm -hmm. That's what I would like. To see if the chief is saying he has to wants to consult with us, then that's fine. Um, anyway, that was a bit of a problem. Yeah. Okay, Liz. Um, I had a quick question, or hopefully a quick question about the hiring committee. Um, and um, because that is one of the other committees, and I'm just wondering if it needs to specify who the board is involved in hiring. With the previous chief, I sat on interviews for constables, and now the board isn't doing that. So I'm not sure if it needs to specify when a board member needs to be sitting in on the interviews. Is it only when we're hiring yeah. a chief? It came up recently because yeah. I was going to be on it, and then I, you know, I made time, and then I was told, oh, you know, because it was a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> I was happy. That's not one to of the be. policies that. Roger's is reviewing and we're looking at cleaning that up just our internal policy as far as hiring committees and who's on what because there was even some questions raised by the association and different people as to how to interpret 
the way it's written as to who should be on all those committees. So um, I agree. There's there's it's been a bit of a cluster and fly by the seat of your pants sometimes as to who's available and any yeah. given time as to who thinks they should or shouldn't be on it. So um, we'll work on cleaning that up or Raj is working on cleaning it up. So once that's done, we'll forward the that policy to everybody and then if it needs some more tweaking or things need to be set out more clearly in it, we can do that. And and isn't it always possible that we could be requested to participate as an on an advisory basis, as opposed to a you know decision making basis, if you felt it was necessary for some reason? I, I think it's a good practice. Like I I think that lends the you know again to the diversity and the overall um, idea of people from uh, looking at things through different lenses and different perspectives and. I think it's a more thorough hiring practice if the board's on it, just like uh, having Joanne on it. Uh, you, you don't just have, you know, I wouldn't want to just have three police officers on it because you kind of get tunnel vision as to maybe what you should or shouldn't be looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My, my experience has been too that, that the one opportunity board gets to meet people, you know, sort of who you normally wouldn't meet. Yeah. So I remember the person I was on the team, you know, to hire. So that'll always be in my head, right? right. And so it's it's a yeah. Nice that's that's not our practice at the city. Though. We we leave that to the manager, you know, to yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think that goes back to the day one, to the days of uh, the board. Then can carry that responsibility, you know, as a council can carry that responsibility for particular hire, and. Um, I don't know. It's, it's it's got its pros and cons. You know, I, I personally like the system where the chief, that's your job to hire the people you think you need, and, and the board lets you do that. And then if we have to check on if you make mistakes on, then you're the guy that has to answer that. But there is also the tunnel vision, and it's a very small department, so yeah. it's two or three people who decide. I will say from experience, the, the few boards we've run since I've been here, I think the the board members and the, the officers, and myself, if I'm on them, are generally pretty much all on the same page. Yeah. But it's still, there's just a couple little things here or there where it's I think it's good to be brought to light and have a discussion yeah. on before you make that final decision. Okay, well, let us know when you get done reviewing the policy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be helpful. Mm -hmm. Will do. So maybe we can just uh, adopt the terms of reference for the audit and finance committee. Yeah, if that's clear enough. Take them one at a time, right? Yeah. I'll so right. finance, uh, we're okay with that. So if somebody wants to move adoption, then. Well, we're going to put in the timelines, though. Yeah. So no, I think you have got that written down, right? Yeah. With the, the so fall. with the changes. Yeah. And with that yeah. detail. Yeah, with that change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the dates were up top there, I think, for yeah. Or well, do you want to see the revised one and then approve it? We could. Mm -hmm. It's OK. We can certainly. Well, we're just adding the dates. To yeah. That's what we're doing to yeah. the finance. Yeah. yeah. There's a bit more detail on the. Yeah. It's, it's, very, just, it's very thorough. Yeah. It's I changed a few things because uh, it's also the audit part had to be added in there. They just said finance committee. It's a finance yeah. and audit committee. Mm -hmm. So that gives you that oversight that you have. Anyway, I'll move if that's okay. Then I'll move that that we accept the terms of reference for the finance and audit committee. Second there, please. Jane, on fair. Thank you. And mm -hmm. uh, the, the, there's still a bit of work to be done on the balance of that right. package there. So yeah. okay, onward and upward. Unless there's anything else anybody had on that. Well, what about the other committees? Governance? Yeah. No, there's governance. You have questions on that? No, I mean, if we're going to accept yeah. in terms of reference, so we need to, you know. Well, we have to get clarity, that. though. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have to get clarity, though, on that part about the our participation or not, right? Yeah. That's for the that's HR. HR. That's HR. Yeah. This is governance. We haven't even looked at. Governance. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's pretty clear. It's very thorough. It's, well, it's, it's only two pages, two one and a half pages. 
Okay, yeah. no, I thought Tyler, was, Tyler and I worked on that one. We just, only, just to the a, point. <laughs> I see a committee shall meet at least three times a year. That's highlighted for yeah. Yeah, so reason. that you know. So would just, that change? Yeah. We just want to know whether people right. agree with that, or like you know, we were just working on the document. Now yeah. you have to put your heads together and come up with what you what you want. Well, I like what was there. Quite mm -hmm. frankly, yeah. so I'll be happy clear. to support that if you want to make a motion. Yeah. Okay. So I'll second. Okay, and that's for the um, governance. For the governance, governance committee as presented. Right. All in favor? Thank you. And the HR one we're leaving now to tear up a few loose ends, right? Yeah. I forgot to ask Charlotte if she got short bread at that meeting. She was pretty excited to come. <laughs> Banana bread. Banana bread, yes. <laughs> she wants to meet on my patio next. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Liz, Liz wants. Yes, sorry, sorry Liz. just just one last thing. Um, I was responsible for the commendations committee, and I was a little behind. I apologize. Um, and our whole terms of reference was actually the Nelson Police Department policy, and I've asked um, Raj to maybe take a look at that because I found the Abbotsford policy was a lot better than ours. So he and I will finish up on that. Yeah, I'll have it for the next meeting. Uh, Perfect. Thanks. Is there a different remote for that speaker, bottom speaker? Because it doesn't seem like the TV ones are. No, I only have. Anything. I only have these two speakers or two remotes. So I don't, and I don't understand why they're not synced. Mm -hmm. so yeah. It's different because they've normally mm -hmm. synced. I think Liz, I, I'm not sure if this will work or not, but you might be a little too far away from your speaker, right. from your well, microphone, maybe. It's in the ear. But I'm wearing my oh, head. Oh, it's in the ear. Okay. I think it's the speakers because I, yeah. I honestly don't think we were changing when when one was at sixty something, one was at thirty something. Yeah, it's still all sound the same. Yeah, yeah, right. It's it's yeah. just it's that external speaker. It's the bottom speaker. Is that what's your computer? Maybe. No, no. It's right. just increasing the screens. Sorry, well, I'll a... yell. I'll yell. Yeah, I'll be as loud as you can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Anyway, we're on number five now, so you're, we have the chief or deputy chief, and we fill in the blanks there. Uh, okay, uh, BCAMCP, I had BCACP and BCAMCP before, um, rather lengthy meetings, but a lot of it was administrative type stuff, and uh, um, a lot of new members, so there was a lot of uh, uh, voting on new members and associate members and that um, we did look at uh, we were we were also reviewing the standing committees that are part of both organizations um, there's 28 standing committees at present for members of uh, BCACP and AMCP um, through some stroke of luck or genius I'm not sure which I, I was appointed as the chair of the cybercrime committee for uh, BCACP, so I've taken that on as well. Uh, it was kind of good timing because I was at a presentation recently where uh, one of the ladies uh, that worked for me in Calgary uh, is now an SME expert on uh, cryptocurrency and cybercrime working out of Ottawa, and she was presenting, so it was good I reached out to her, so I'll have her uh, as a resource uh, for future and I think we're planning on a number of um, meetings coming up. And as I said, I think, you know, cybercrime is very challenging, not to get off on a tangent, but it's uh, probably one of the, the blossoming, if you want to call it that, uh, types of crime in the world. And it's transnational and it's uh, extremely difficult to investigate, but it's uh, running rampant with, you know, various types of frauds and scam and ransomware that's being put out there. So I certainly think it's something that needs to be looked at and addressed. And uh, I think, you know, even some of the bigger police departments and the RCMP are having significant challenges uh, keeping up with the investigation and files in those areas. And the, uh, you know, the, the limited number of resources that are highly skilled and have the technical abilities in those areas are of such demand that they're only, you know, dealing with multi, multi-million dollar uh, frauds or ransomware is at uh, government agencies and hospitals and things like that so it's kind of one of those it, it's it's not a good news story but certainly one we can't ignore so i'm kind of excited to be part of that committee and we'll just have to see where it goes um, i'm also on the mental health and addictions committee um, 
that that was underway before I got here, but uh, on there looking at some strategies that I think come into play in a number of different issues that we we look at in Nelson, uh, in particular dealing with the mental health and addictions and some of the um, assessment tools that are maybe available, uh, ones that help officers make decisions, but ones that are uh, linked to the healthcare system so that uh, those reports when the officer are doing assessments or getting electronically sent to uh, either mental health or to the hospital emergency ward and things like that. So it it allows them to um, give some advice to have real time sort of updates of what the officer is seeing in the field. And it also helps the department because uh, in theory, and it's it it's been put into play in other provinces. It's they're just looking at it as a pilot project here, but it. Uh, it's supposed to prioritize those calls at the emergency room and have staff ready and putting them into the queue before the officers even get there. So it should limit the time that officers are off the street and uh, having to, to stay with a, a subject until they're assessed and uh, properly dealt with by the hospital. So um, there's a few initiatives in there that are that are good and uh, we've got a meeting coming up this week. So uh, that one we haven't had a meeting for a while. So I'm interested <coughs> to see where those initiatives are at. Um, we got several updates from a number of the other committees. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, this one was one of the first of the year, so just voting on new members and associate members. Uh, we got some updates on a leadership conference that's been put on by the CACP that's in uh, BC this year. Um, somewhat con still contingent on public health measures, but it looks like it's going ahead. Um, the, the issue with myself attending, even though there's there's some good topics on the agenda, we have some uh, mental health um, presentations and events and stuff happen, but we'd set up happening here that we've been working on for quite a while. Charlotte has done a lot of work on it, so so likely going to uh, have to pass on this meeting. But uh, on that note, we've got some very uh, worthy presentations and guest speakers coming in to speak uh, to, to the department and spouses and some of the other uh, uh, people in the area. So uh, unfortunate that the timing is crossed over. And uh, just on that note too, the uh, the in-person meetings seem to be slowly coming back. So uh, the quarterly meetings, I think uh, starting in June, look like they're gonna be in person again. So hopefully COVID kind of takes a break for a while and we actually get to have some of those meetings because I, uh, as Raj and I were talking about, it's uh, it's really good, um, you know, that you still get the presentations when you're doing stuff online, but uh, there's a lot of value in that uh, after meetings, the contacts you make, discussing, like we were saying, discussing some of the issues as a small department we run into, and then other people say, you know, oh, we had a similar issue, and this is what we did. So, you know, that, that value of those meetings has been lost for a couple of years, so it'll be nice to get back to that. Um, and I'll move on to community policing unless there's any questions on that. Chief, can I just ask about the cyber crime? Um, so we're, you know, a really small police department here compared to other places, and it sounds like larger organizations are having difficulty dealing with that. What What are your goals and expectations around, um, you know, your ability to deal with cyber crime within our department, or is it more like trying to connect with those larger organizations so you're not reinventing the wheel or? It's going to be kind of a combination of both. I, th I think there's, you know, there's always going to be those cutoff points where, um, you know, what happens with the fraudulent checks with other frauds that uh, there just isn't the capacity to investigate. So the threshold isn't necessarily met, even though that doesn't mean it's not a criminal offense. Right. So we're working on developing some capacity within the department. Okay. Um, you know those those smaller level frauds, the online scams, some of those things, and I and I think even on that note, a lot of the a lot of the focus will probably go to prevention and awareness, um, because obviously that's the better the better scenario, anyways, that people aren't taken advantage of. Um, but again, the 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 biggest problem is it's you need that you know you need that skill level, and we can certainly get some people some training, but they're very uh, resource intensive, time intensive for investigators. And uh, as you see from other presentations, like our GIS section, who would be the ideal section to assign it to, is pretty 
overloaded with with all of the other uh, criminal uh, files that they're investigating and, and things are following them. So uh, again, skill level is one issue and capacity is the other issue. So and, and that's right across the country. That's not unique to us, but um, certainly I think having some, you know, we'd be, I, I think as a whole, the country would be better off having some very dedicated resources. Uh, We'll probably never have enough to deal with everything, but dedicated resources with the right skills and the focus on that can be much more efficient at dealing with these files than, you know, unfortunately our GIS members trying to do that off the corner of their desk with limited time and training on it. So I would think, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Just on the prevention side, you know, the banking sector is trying to so make it difficult to get in. So they're using um, Biometrics, so they started to use biometrics, and they're also doing the double authentication. You know, yeah. you, you get a text message or a voicemail or yeah. something to. So that's what they are working on that side, so we can people can't get into people's accounts. Yeah. So that's the other side of it. So it'll make your job a little easier. That helps. It's the uh, it's the phishing scam still of the people that mm -hmm. they're they're not breaking into their account. They're getting you to get their access to the right. account. Right. So. Exactly. <laughs> That's yeah. true. I know. That's they, true. Yeah, you know, amazing. It, it, if if some people use their skills for for good, it would be an amazing world because yeah. uh, they seem to be able to figure out a way around everything, no matter yeah. what securities yeah. are put in place. Yeah. True. Quote of the day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, community policing. Uh, so a couple things this week we've. Uh, the deputy, myself, and uh, Constable Zakowski had a tour of the hub, which is downtown on uh, Baker, uh, sorry, Vernon Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just, we got a tour of the facility and, you know, what the different uh, resources they have available there, some of the challenges they face, uh, had a, a meet and discussion with a number of the, the clients that are there. Um, it was a fairly uh, interesting tour. Uh, we also then had kind of a side meeting with uh, the representatives of the hub, Nelson Cares and Anchors, uh, and just had some discussions around harm reduction, safe, uh, safe drug testing program, um, some of the challenges with uh, um, them just being physically located there and, uh, and discussed, um, you know, just, just some of the, I guess, concerns and things we could do to work together to, to try and make that a more um, viable program and potentially location for uh, uh, for that to be or or suggested maybe there's alternatives to look at uh, other locations that might be better suited but uh, I think that's a bit of an ongoing thing so uh, we'll continue to work with them on that um, we recently had a, an event uh, Constable Schmidtke was kind of the lead in, in promoting uh, the copsicle uh, event where the, the cops trying to turn them into popsicles, I guess, uh, that had to, to oh, go yeah. on the roof and stay yeah. there until a certain amount of money was raised. And that was money being raised for the Special Olympics. And uh, that coincided with the polar plunge that I was quite sad I had to be out of town. <laughs> I'm somewhat sad, but somewhat not sad. And, uh, but I, I feel it was... Uh, but you're for next year's. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's coming up with all new ingenious ways to dunk me in the middle of the lake next year. <laughs> I have to touch the bottom or something, he said. Um, but but uh, quite impressed with the turnout from the department. Uh, I thought there would be uh, the deputy and maybe one or two others who were organizing it. And uh, uh, what was the final total of just Nelson police members that were there? It had to be six or eight yeah there's eight of them eight yeah eight them. so you know getting close to half the department showed up and participated so that was fantastic um just a little while, a little earlier today uh lisa sent the message out about the the funds raised and it was seven thousand and a little over seven thousand wow. dollars yeah. so, so certainly a lot of uh a uh, lot of good turnout for the events and uh, a lot of money raised for a worthy cause so that was fantastic. I, there was some of the Special Olympics athletes on site. Uh, I heard they were quite uh, quite excited about it and quite happy about it and appreciative of it. So that was nice to see too. Mm -hmm. uh, we also had a meeting with uh, Sail Nelson, which is uh, one of the organizations that teaches sailing and organizes events and does things in the community. 
and uh, that was around discussing some safe uh, boat safety events that we can maybe get going early in the summer. Um, this would be for the community and likely in Lakeside Park or somewhere like that, uh, where it's a high, you know, high visibility area. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I think we would utilize that too for some of the members. Just we were talking about uh, one of the other things we talked about was just uh, more patrols and enforcement on the water this year. It's been difficult to get, you know, we just we haven't had the resources to have one officer out on the water at any given time either, but trying to make sure that's a priority this year. And we probably use uh, Sail, Belson and the Coast Guard to, to give some uh, information and training to some of our officers, uh, like myself, who's not an avid boater. So it's, uh, you know, it'd be good to give them that comfort level understanding of what the basic requirements are and some of the things to be looking for while they're out on the water. So, fish. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, we, we were also looking at just because of the, you know, we had that meeting with the RCMP attendant as well, and just they have some of the same issues with they're just, you know, it's hard to find enough people to be out on the water at any given time. So we're looking at combining resources with the RCMP and conservation officers so that, you know, between the three of us and we'll likely touch base with the fire department as well is because uh, obviously they have operators and they have different things they could look for and search and rescue things. Yeah, yeah search and rescue they have their own boat yeah, i'm not sure if they would want to get into the enforcement piece if we did that but uh, certainly would be useful in the uh, public education piece and some yeah. of that sort of thing so so there's a number of things we're looking at to try and you know have a little more presence on the water this year and uh, i think it's been Pretty fortunate there's been no no incidents on the water per se since I've been here. But uh, you know, again, you want to be proactive with those things and mm -hmm. make sure that people know the police are out and about and, as well as fire and conservation. So it certainly seems that in the last couple of years it's there's been a lot more traffic on the water mm -hmm. from my yeah. perspective as a as a canoeist. Yeah. A lot more paddle boats and stuff. Yeah. yeah, well I went out with the family and did uh, kayaking once and we didn't get too far from shore, but you know, there was quite a few times big boats going by not yeah. that far out that gave you some exciting mm -hmm. waves. Yeah. Wave turbulence <laughs> that's what you're not used to. But um still working with the uh, air cadets. Uh They've, they've, they're finally back to, we've had two sessions now back in person, so it's been, uh, it's been a little bit getting used to being in person again, but uh, I think the cadets are happy to be back in person and some of the teaching parts of it has certainly been easier in person than trying to do presentations on lines with all the technical sound issues and things that always seem to crop up in the middle of your presentations. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a an indigenous event this evening at uh, the Capitol Theater, and it's uh, entitled "Renewed Conversations." So it's around some of the truth and reconciliation and, and different things. So um, depending depending on how the meeting goes tonight, I'm going to try and get to that as well. But I, I let them know we have police board, so they they understand if I am late or don't make it. But I think it's uh, another worthwhile event to attend. So. Okay, next is the foundation. Kind of Rich, I'll put you in the spot. Is there yeah. anything <clears throat> up, the there. Up from the? We're meeting next <clears throat> week, next uh, okay. Tuesday or Wednesday, and then we'll probably be doing a burger or beverage fundraiser to start. Yeah. And the gala has been postponed to November. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Remember what? Do you know what the date was? Twenty six, I think. Yeah. Oh, late November. Okay. Late. It might, it might yeah. have to move to the night, the weeks before the 19th, because the students might have exams that week, but, but that's kind of end of November. I, I still kind of think that was the, the best case scenario with, uh, it gives us time to, to make it a, a true, you know, a truly great event. And uh, I think it culminates the year of uh, celebrations and different events around the 125th anniversary mm -hmm. of that. So it's, it'd be a nice way to wrap up the year. Uh, we do have a few, and I may have mentioned this at the last meeting, but uh, some decals for the cars, some challenge coins and a few other things uh, to promote 125th that we've uh, ordered now and uh, looking at uh, the police foundation is likely uh, going to cover some of those costs as part of the 125th. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to see them and uh, we should hopefully by the time the next police board meeting, we should have some of them uh, arrived so we can show them to you. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And now fentanyl. 
not too much of an update, and I uh, I might defer to Roger in a minute just to see if there's anything he wants to add on this one. Um, as you likely all know, there was there was quite a high spike in uh, overdoses and issues around fentanyl, and I you know I I did send a bit of an article out, but I you know I think it's worth mentioning again just the great work the officers have been doing around that, getting to the scenes quickly, administering the naloxone and oftentimes multiple uh, doses of naloxone and then often the crimes again having to perform additional uh, first aid and CPR and stuff on individuals to bring them back and uh, they've received a lot of compliments from the, the first responders on the medical staff and the doctors and that that have uh, take it over at some point. So uh, doing a good work there. It's, uh, you know, it is a bit scary. We've been working on trying to get some some data or analysis back on a lot of the drugs. Uh, certainly the fentanyl content in the drugs is significantly higher than it than it was even a couple of years ago when I first, you know, when it first became a problem and and uh, um, just trying to pull the numbers, but it was you know, going to be like 10 or 15 percent content of fentanyl. Now it's routinely 30 to 40 percent and uh, which speaks somewhat to the you know the amount that's being used somewhat to the tolerance that's been built up by some people and then explains why some people are taking three four or five doses of naloxone to counteract the effects of the fentanyl so it's you know it's kind of scary on different you know, multiple levels i guess um and we're we're kind of routinely uh, running thin on naloxone so we've had to do a few kind of rush shipments to get stocks back up so it's it's uh, it's an expensive, you know, not that cost drive that we shouldn't have it, but uh, it certainly is uh, an ex expensive hit to the budget mm -hmm. as well. The province has not taken any responsibility for those costs. All that. Well, what we it, it seemed like they were they were going to. There were discussions around that the police department's funding their own naloxone. And I, I thought it was heading that way, but the most recent update was they they will replace, so they will pay for and replace naloxone kits that have expired. You know, so some of the time we're not ordering as many as maybe we could or should, but because they're expensive and they do expire, you don't want them sitting there expiring. And, uh, but as of late, we're not running into that issue of them even getting the chance to expire. They're barely getting in the door. Um, so the only way, uh, as far as we understand that the province would fund or assist with that is replacing expired ones. So it doesn't really help us at this point. I don't have anything else to add, Chief. I know we had a high number last month in regards to fentanyl overdoses. And once again, like the officers were exceptional. I know there's a couple of emails sent out responses yeah. that they had done. Very, very good. Yeah. Liz, did you have your hand up at one point there? I had the same question as you. Why doesn't the province offer funding for the naloxone? Because the ambulance service would have it funded through the province. So why wouldn't the police departments? Yeah, we've kind of wondered that ourselves and some of the NGOs and things in town uh, get supplies. In fact, we had to go and borrow some or be gifted some, I guess, if you want to call it that, from some of the, the agencies that have no problem getting them replaced uh, at no cost to themselves. So maybe that's the way to do it. Yeah, maybe it is. <laughs> I thought of that. Some of your, yeah. your own solution here. Yeah. Anchors, be Anchors can provide you the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry, not, not the right term. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should be writing a letter. Yeah, I just made a note here. Um, I, I'll take care of that this week. I'll get a letter sent out from on behalf of the board and, in fact, on behalf of council as well, because I mean, it is a community wide problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Write, yeah. I'll write to the minister and talk to and just ask that question about the supply of uh, cost to the department. Be interesting. Have you checked with your counterparts? Are they all purchasing their own? Because if you're in Vancouver, that would be a lot, of, mm -hmm. a lot of. But comparative scale, we're probably percentage wise for size of the department, we're probably spending just as much yeah. or close yeah. to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
especially as so far this year. So all other departments are buying their own. If you're aware of unless that. they've arranged, gotten some, you know, special yeah. sponsor or something, but they they would have had to have done that on their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got a note of that. Uh, that is so. I'll yeah, and, that. And I, ideally we would get the province to pay for it, but if we can't, then maybe we should consider looking for a sponsor. And what are the what would the uh, numbers look like? What could we be talking as far as? I know it's all numbers yeah. or well, I know it can we, vary. It can flow from time. Do we order 16? We have used uh, they're about 150, 160. So to be just under a thousand dollars for 12. Pardon? Under a thousand dollars for 12 kits. No, we're 90. Yeah. Yeah. Was, was there not that? 75. Dollars that, is it, was that because you got it in like a bulk order? So I thought they were. They were priced at around 150 a piece, but yeah, I think I I didn't do it this time in a bulk order. I ordered in January and I had um and 12 kits, I mean it's just six, two in a kit. So it's really only six kits mm -hmm. with twelve with two units in each one. So that's yeah. all you get. And you might go through one box with one person. So did you kits. um did you get me those numbers? So I included in this letter. Yeah, and that 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 sixteen, um, sixteen overdoses in that uh, forty-eight hour period uh, often took multiple. You know, uh, there was a few that took four, uh, quite a few that took three, and a couple that took two. But so even if you use two or three as an average, like there's thirty or forty, right there, and that was over two days. So, you know, there, there's over three thousand dollars in naloxone expended. In, two days, you know, and that's certainly unusual and hopefully that, that doesn't happen very often, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not inexpensive either. Is it, is it always the case that you're first on scene as opposed to ambulance or fire? It's not always the case, but it's 80 to 90% of the time, yeah. just okay. because the members are ready to go right. yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and usually closer and oftentimes out on patrol and in the area. Yeah. So I don't know, it's, it's the vast majority of time police are first on scene. Well, that's another good reason why they should cover the costs. Yeah, or at least um, <laughs> restock you when the ambulance shows up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> and that's another yeah. option. Yeah. yeah. OK, it's a sad state of affairs. Regardless of how that's Okay, director's reports. Okay, we'll talk about the chair's report. Chair's on holidays. I mean, we can talk about BC APB. <coughs> right. Director's report, if you yeah, like. Absolutely, yeah. Sure, sure. So, the, as you know, the, the terms for Liz and myself are coming up, so we'll be yeah. leaving the board this year. Uh, but the ministry also wants to have the performance appraisal reports from the the continuing members. So Sue and you and you, we need your, uh, your performance reports uh, sent in because uh, the minister is planning to reappoint you, but they need the reports. But who writes the report? The mayor has the yeah, I was going to say. Well. <laughs> so they have an idea. Better behave ourselves, Lena. Yeah. Uh, keep an eye yeah. on <laughs> well, That's what you were saying, Angelina. That's, that's, why, I, was that's talking? why I said Angelina. Yeah. 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 Where's that uh, coming from? And the only question I have is this. I was going to phone you separately, but I'm putting a little bit of pressure on this. Are you willing to put your names forward? Are you willing, to, are you willing to put your names your forward? Name. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I would hope that you would because yeah. each one of okay. you, all of you, can do an excellent standing for us. So along <laughs> those lines, assuming that you were going to do that too, so we also have to have a new representative to the BCAPB board, representing Nelson. So the three of you should think about who would like to be that, and we should probably make a decision in April, the April meeting. So when we go to the conference, I can introduce you to to the as a new person. Yeah, as a new person. So they, we need um, the actual representative and an alternate in case the new rep cannot go there. Okay. And nominated by the board, I imagine. Yeah, yes. 
So we would just simply say this is our representative, yeah. and so that's what we need. Uh, just to let you know, there are supposed to be four meetings a year, but they were all done the last two years by Zoom. Yeah. So, and before that, how were they done? We would actually travel to. It was at the Delta Police Department. They shared, they had their office, a boardroom. And so you had to go to the there to do the meeting. So you, but the way the airline is, it's almost like one day to get there, one day for the meeting, and one day to get back for a three hour meeting. Right. So it's, it's, it's more efficient option. to do it online. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I think right. they'll allow the Zoom just yeah. like this, what we're doing. Yeah. I think they'll allow that because it's much more convenient, for, at least for us. So yeah. that's what it is. Well, you have Victoria Sanage and Upby as well, right? So yeah. Mm -hmm. It's no yeah. easy. Yeah. So that's what that is. Um, the, um, at the meeting, at the BCH APV meeting, there was concern about the high cost of, of police training, the Justice Institute, and who's picking up those costs. Right. It's <clears> always a municipality that's picking up the cost, so there's been some concern as to where are we going with this thing? Is yeah. it becoming out of control? So that was one issue as well. Yeah, um, and there's in that report later on in the agenda, there's mm. yeah. yeah, there's talk about training there as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know they they significantly increased the uh, tuition costs for the officers too as of mm -hmm. May, so they're trying to recoup some of those costs in other places. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is just that the conference is coming up and I think we should all go because you know we haven't spent any money in the last two years going anywhere. And that's hurrah with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you and if we do agree to go, we should really ask uh, Charlotte to book the rooms right now, mm -hmm. just in case. And uh, even if you have to back out, it doesn't matter because uh, that hotel doesn't have that many rooms. The one by the, where the me meeting is, mm -hmm. so you might have to. We, we've been telling the local people to say, look, you come to the meeting, you don't stay there, you, have, you go home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, because we need the rooms for everyone else. Mm -hmm. So it would be a good idea to let Shala know that, yes, I, I suggest we should just book the five rooms. We can always cancel if we have to. Okay. What was the date again, Adam? I think uh, 26th and 27th. May. Of May. Of May. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I'm looking yeah, forward yeah. to that because I, I actually haven't been to anything in person because of yeah. COVID, and then I couldn't go the first year I was appointed. And so, sure. um, yeah, it was I think so it would fun. be really great it's to really good. network and, you know, yeah, meet some of our colleagues. And, Absolutely, yeah. it'd be very like good. The chief was saying earlier, like that, it's, the, yeah. Yeah. it's that kind of networking yeah. you know, yeah. between sessions that's really important. Actually, you know, yeah. the chiefs are invited. So, you know, yeah. if you wanted to, uh, join us, I think it'd be great. Right. So, yes, that's my awesome. report. Thanks okay. very much, Alan. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, correspondence and information. Once again, we have the ADA here, which is West Kirkton People's Racial Justice response letter. <coughs> What is the action on that one? Like, is it because it just said for information, right, on the agenda? Well, I read, of course, we all read through it, I'm sure, yeah. but, yeah. but do we just, have to respond? It do just we... almost seems that if we wrote one back, did write one back to us, yeah. you know, let's get to that point where, um, Sue? Well, you know, I read this letter several times and I realize that they are asking for responses about specific things, some of the subtleties of the meanings of the data and and uh, the uh, actions or activities or um, uh, initiatives of the police to try to uh, address some of these issues. It occurs to me that doing this in letters is a real waste of time because I think we end up talking past each other and I wonder if it, you know, I think we've shied away from dialogue for a bunch of reasons, but I suspect that the only way these things are actually going to be answered is through face-to-face -face dialogue. You know, we could keep writing three and four page letters back and forth. You know, this is my opinion about the data questions that you asked. And then they say, well, but what about this? And, you know, like we can go back and forth and nobody's satisfied. 
So um, one and one other point that I would like to make is that they say that they want to ensure that the police boards are representative of the communities and especially requiring every board to have indigenous representation. Well, you know, we would be thrilled if indigenous individuals would apply, you know, but as you know, we haven't we haven't had any uh, individuals express any interest in participating on the police board, either as the municipal um, appointment or a provincial appointment. So anyway, I that's my thought. I, I think this probably requires dialogue instead of letters is really where I'm coming from. Yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with you at all on, on that point. However, there's a few sentences in here that you know, question our stats that, you know, we can support quite easily about the number of, as an example, Aboriginal people that are arrested versus, or coloured people versus. Um, I don't know how you argue that and just continue to argue it, you know. Um, well, but I think that's the point is when you're not actually asking them, well, what exactly do you mean by this sentence? Because here's how we understand it. And then see what they say. <clears throat> you know, as opposed to just quoting stats. Mm -hmm. yeah. So one of the things they do ask for in this in this letter is um, a public forum uh, to enable community members to engage on this topic. So that's actually one of the asks in the letter, probably the most clearest ask mm -hmm. as far as I Are they asking say. us to set that up too? Well, I would think that, I mean, that would be a great thing for them to do is to organize a public forum and invite, you know, board chair or board members and the chief or deputy chief to to attend. And that's that would be my recommendation there. In, in my opinion, I don't, and I'm speaking only for myself, I do not feel sufficiently grounded in the data to respond to data questions without you know, the chief or the deputy chief there. Uh, I, I simply think that anything that I would say would be misleading. Well, I mean, it, I, I think engaging face to face is just shows some respect <clears throat> and consideration at the least. So mm -hmm. that one item you'd mentioned, Jane, that they want a public meeting. Well, that'll sort satisfy that particular issue. The, the statistics, uh, if they talk about it, we can't start arguing about, so, oh no, this is wrong and that is wrong. We just we just listen mm -hmm. and just say, okay, how are we going to respond? I say, let's listen, listen to them, their point of view. And then we'll say, no, we'll talk about it and see how we can address this. Mm -hmm. If you just start defending your position, then it's confrontational. Then no, there's no need to, be, to do that. You just need to say, we're, we're here to listen. Mm -hmm. And, and is there something we can do that's possible to do? We will do it. So I mean, the diversity committee is an amazing thing to me. Like we can bring them up to date on what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, Sherry Walsh, she, I don't know if she still is, but she used to be the chair of the school district. Is she still? Uh, no, she's I don't think so. No. Of, mm. of the, our, of the um, of district, eight. Or, district eight. Oh, yes. School district. She, yes. was, she was the chair. Right. I don't know if she's still. I don't is. think so. Um, ah. But anyway, she like you know she. she I met her uh, for weeks. Good a person, like ago. I yeah. you know, we'll be able to talk to her. And Absolutely she's reasonable. Uh, you know her interest in race relations because she's adopted a child from China. So I think that's yeah. you know one of her reasons for being involved. But she's okay. not she's not a person of color, Sherry Walsh. No. Well, then the other question too is if do they want an open forum where it's going to be, you know, a handful of us and a room of 50 people in the community? Is that really, you know, is that where we want to go with it? Or would we like to sit down with the the key people in this group and discuss it, you know, at, at what I think would be a more elevated level? I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm just nervous about what it might turn into. Yeah, I mean, those those uh, public forums can sometimes turn into a bit of a mess, but at the same time, you know, if they're willing to set something up and they want, uh, you know, members of the board and the 
and chief to attend, then we can we can do that. But I think it should be their initiative, not ours, because we're doing what we can on on our side with the diversity committee. And you know, there's only so much time in the day where we can send the chief to these uh, to uh, to meetings, and uh, there's only so much time in the day to continue answering and letters. You know, it just seems to me, and that's why I said at the beginning. It wouldn't matter what response we'd have to this, there'd be another one coming back that we missed something else. So um, maybe a face to face is fine. You know, simple things like <clears throat> like diversity on the board. I think the province has done a darn good job of getting diversity on this board. And in fact, the reason we were short for some time was was trying to find people that sort of to fit, you know, the model that they want to see. And uh, but having said that, at the end of the day, there's a certain uh, critique that people have to go through as well. And not everybody's going to qualify to sit on this board. No, exactly. There's a screening process. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I did reach out to two um, well-known Aboriginal people in our community to see if they'd be interested in putting their name forward because there is a position coming up and there was no response. And we only had one person apply for the, uh, for, uh, the, the municipal uh position there's just not uh, i don't know if it's there's just not interest out there and then when there is interest as an example one person did write to me uh, very interested in being on the board about six months ago when i explained to that person what's involved through board resources and uh you know criminal record checks and background checks and so forth that was the last i heard but these are good explanations. I mean, yeah. We're not arguing at all. We're just yeah, saying just we agree. Just calling them. Yeah. 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 And I, I shared the, with all my contacts the, yeah. the ad. So did I. I sent it to anchors. And yeah. and the, the other thing, of course, too, that uh, you know, could be, we could address is that the board doesn't build a board. <laughs> you know, we don't get together and say, let's get this person on the board and the mayor doesn't no, go no. up and... So but so but on. but we do you know we can spend time looking at what we need like you know exactly. with M in leaving yeah. we need somebody with a financial, financial background. background exactly we and can say that we don't have to our, mention the person that's in our information yeah because you know about but there's, needed. there's also some responsibility for people in the community that have a concern with it to to come forward do their part to exactly. promote or like people <clears> out in <throat> different yeah. position like absolutely you know, everybody has to take their own yeah. part of the ownership yeah. So yes. let's get a let's get a bit of a, a handle on this one here. Um, so you have a suggestion, I think. I, no, I just have one question uh, because we've been talking among ourselves, but I wonder what the chief's reaction to this letter was. Well, uh, off the start, I would say similar to you, I had to I had to read it three times to kind of digest what <laughs> what they were looking for. Um, some of the issues that you've raised, I have the same opinion or same idea around, and I uh, I wouldn't probably mind skipping over it now, but I do have a presentation that I thought I would be expected to kind of uh, speak to this this evening, so I do have some information put together if you want to go through it. Um, but I but I agree that I think the uh, the idea of back and forth letters is not no. accomplishing anything, and I think at some point an in person meeting is a good idea. And, uh, um, you know, I, I think with the diversity advisory committee as it's going is somewhat the, you know, would address the, the public forum piece. Like it's, uh, again, it's not finalized and it's not exactly determined who should be on it, but we should have a representative of all parts of the community on that. So uh, they should be able to bring issues forward. But, uh, you know, I'm not opposed to at some point there being a, a town hall or something, um, but, you know, there there would have to be uh, a moderator or somebody to kind of keep keep things positive and productive and, and under control. Mm -hmm. We have a facilitator. Yeah. Do you and think the DAC, that it's going to take some time mm -hmm. to develop the DAC? So in the meantime, yeah, like maybe you know some kind of a meeting with while we are setting up the committee and because we're just getting started. <laughs> Yeah. Do you think that it would make sense for you to have a one on one chief with Sherry Walsh or at least propose it? And if she rejects it and says no community forum or nothing, well, then fine. But at least you would have a chance 
you know, potentially to address some of these things face to face. Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to that. And I, I mm -hmm. think she would be acceptable to it. I, I, I don't know her really personally or anything, but I, I think she would be. She's I, my only concern would be she might want it to be a more of a group, you know, have some other representation from the group, whereas I think then it should be uh, myself, myself, the deputy and somebody from the board. Yeah. But, and but either way, I would be open to a, mm -hmm. a, a smaller meeting to start with. Yeah. I would support that, having yeah. a smaller meeting where there's a board member there as well, because we, you know, we do play some of that community liaison role, right? And, um, and uh, so I think that would be a good idea. Um, a couple of things. One is, well, I understand the inclination to say, well, go ahead and set it up. You know, in reality, the West Kootenai People for Racial Justice are a bunch of people who, for reasons of personal experience, have experienced racism, whether it's here or elsewhere. And I, you know, I know as a mom of kids of color, my kids have experienced racism too, not with, at the hands of the police, let's be clear, like in the school system, but I've been dealing with that and it is exhausting. So I think it would be a very good um, gesture for us to be the ones who set that meeting up. And even like have an initial meeting. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. if we want to go the public forum route, maybe have it dovetail with the introduction of our diversity advisory committee, even if they aren't well established yet, but it could, you know, co coincide with that timing or something like that. But I guess on that note, as the diversity advisory committee is not completely set up yet, no, there may right. there may be some input or feedback from the West Coast people sure. for racial justice that could influence or maybe something we haven't thought of on, mm -hmm. on the committee that needs to be represented or or thought of at least to make sure that we're covering all that off. So, yeah. you know, feedback and input it never, never hurts. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway, I'd be willing to be part of that. I totally agree that uh, that if we have any kind, anything more than a small meeting with say no more than, you know, five or six people, that we need to have a, a really, really strong facilitator to make Oh, she's frozen. <clears throat> You're frozen, Sue. Yeah, so Sue, right as far as the Senate goes, we. So, sh um, yeah, with right. Yeah, 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 sure. Right back, and yeah. uh, I can go as the board chair, and if, um, <clears throat> board chair and Jane. Yeah. You wish, yeah. yeah. Jane wants one, the chief, and, and, chief and the deputy chief. chief. Deputy chief. Yeah. <clears throat> and we'll tell them that we'll have four people attending so yeah. they can have four on whatever they want. Yeah. Sure. That's good. Presentation. You got lots of time in your hands, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just saying to Lawrence today. To come to attend, yeah. <laughs> I just told, I texted Sue and told her she's frozen well, in case she doesn't know. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if she can hear us, but. I think it should be five and five. I think we should maybe bring Lena as well. You know, I, I think. Uh, well, I know Sherry. Yeah. Well, I know well, Sherry too. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, if we can have fun. So we're right? friendly. Like, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? She, she would. Yeah, it'd just be a nice conversation. And uh, I agree. I think an initial conversation is probably the best way to start. Sure. Um, and then if they want a public forum, definitely. Yeah. At least we know we can express um, our concerns with the letter and then kind of get some clarity in regards to what they're looking for. Well, everybody okay with that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Good, Shiloh. So you're on top of that uh, already, I can see. Thank you. Um, Should we skip this? You probably need to use it. Huh? You probably do that at your um at this meeting instead. We already did the conference. Yeah. Call for resolutions. Is that, um, do you happen to know what, uh, um, you know, today as an example, we had that conversation about the kits, right? The, uh, the cost to these departments. Is yeah. that something with? I mean, there's nothing wrong with suggesting it again. 
Has it know. been up at the brought up at the conference in the past, do you know, or you know, I don't. You know, I just seem to remember that we had that discussion some time ago where the province said they wanted to not support it 100 percent. It was going to be a municipal responsibility. And then they were going to come up with a two million dollars a year grant by 2024. That's all they're going to contribute to the Justice, Inst uh, Justice Institute. And then the municipalities are going to pick up the rest and it was averaging out to about 28,000 per <coughs> trainee. That's what the city is going to be stuck with. So that, but that was just a report we got. Yeah, yeah. you know. So I think if you phone David Dilling, Dilling, you know, he could probably give you that. Yeah. Um, because if there's a call, for, there is a call for resolutions, and it is one. Mm -hmm. if the board felt comfortable with what we could put forward. Is that the province fund? Yeah. Cost to. Uh, Municipal police departments. You know the who was your president? Are you talking about the cost Colin of training? Are you talking about no, the cost of, of the product yeah. itself? So right. we're talking. I think you're talking things. about two different things. He's think, talking about the, the the training that's provided by Justice, Justice Institute. Institute. Yeah, the mayor yeah, is talking yeah, about the year, fentanyl, yeah, right? Oh, which one are you talking about? Naloxone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Sorry. I like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That should be the case. And it's a great idea to ask for that. Yeah, so we could put that forward as a resolution. As a resolution, yeah. I could yeah. craft that up tomorrow. And, yeah, absolutely. And um, between Shiloh and I, we could send it in. Okay. Would that be okay? Yeah. Absolutely. Great. It's very valid. That'd be good. That'd clear up. Yeah, and I was talking about the Justin Institute. Yeah. And it, it was. That's saying, been an ongoing challenge. Yeah. Every year. Do you know what yeah. they were saying that? Five years ago, the average school teacher salary was the same as the police officer salary. In five years, a difference is this much now. <laughs> police uh, school teachers are not happy that they are. They said that we're doing some sort of policing anyway. Why aren't we not getting the same, same. salary as police officers? <laughs> and then and they say it's just getting so much out of control and who's really responsible. And is it a provincial responsibility policing? That's the argument. Okay, and the guidelines for the resolution. So I'll tackle that tomorrow. Shiloh, and I'll give you a call. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Action list and items. Just one more thing. Sponsor, right? Sponsorship. Sponsorship. We need a resolution. Sponsorship, I beg your pardon, for the... Uh, for the uh, breakfast. Convention. Breakfast. I think we did. Did we do? A oh, I just sent a break. breaks or something. Yeah, you, you sent know, us I a note. Sent a recommendation that yeah. we do a breakfast. Mm -hmm. Right. We can yeah. do that. Yeah. Yes. So we're not doing the coffee break. Well, we're I think the breakfast. breakfast is more takes longer, and people yeah. sit around and chat, yeah. and we can yeah. see our we can connect. Note and that's all. So that's why it asks for $75 more. All we need, all we need is a seconder on profit second. raise. Second, all in favor? Carried. We're not hosting the conference, so the breakfast no, seems like, like yeah, exactly. something yeah, we can compromise. <laughs> oh, by the way, Artem does not stop. You know, he's the sec second in command after David Cummings. Oh, yeah. yeah. He yeah. is leaving the his police services and he's moving on to immigration. Has he gone already? I think on the 21st is his last day. Oh, of March. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was a good guy. To... He's a nice fellow. Oh, yeah. He was telling me how disappointed he is that the conference is not taking place in, in Nelson. Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I was looking so looking forward to that. Huh, I wonder who his replacement's going to be. Yeah. Okay, so we got the breakfast all sorted out. The action items. Again, I was going to say that's a pretty short list. Chief, there's, there's one other issue was with the CAPG. If you want, were you able to listen in on that conference no. on uh, crisis and uh, policing governance? That was really good conference. Some of it. If you didn't, I can send you a link. That's a recording. So they've taken ten of the top people in Canada, mm -hmm. and they speak for five minutes each. That's it. So the meeting goes on for like 
it's an hour and it's done, but actually then there's a whole bunch of people not ask questions, but, but there's a recording is there and if you like, I can forward you the link. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So would all of you like that? Okay, mm -hmm. sure, I'll do that there. Yeah, and then you can listen to that to your mm -hmm. leisure. But they talk about a lot of things and basically there was our responsibility as governance. And then as we talk about, you know, what is operational, what is governance and how we sticking our noses in somewhere we shouldn't be and, and, and yet what are we responsible for? So I thought it was, it was a very good conference and they offered it for free just because it says we're CAPG members and that's all it is. So, yeah. A couple of things I gleaned from that yeah. um, were, was that, you know, there's a conversation about having, how to engage public and having town halls being mm -hmm. not so effective sometimes because yeah. it, you know if if you have got a lot of good things to say but you can't come on that night or whatever you know that's it right or vice versa you know you end up listening to the people who are the most vocal in the room yeah. um and so some of the people were talking about how they are engaging people on draft policies in their community so they're sending up draft policies mm -hmm. um, ones that would be appropriate to have public engagement on mm -hmm. um and also more engagement with strategic planning yeah. and, and i like both of those things as opportunities for public in engagement. I think in the, in the end, it might be a constructive way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just a thought. Well, I'll certainly send that to you. We have lost Sue. Eh? Yeah. She's rebooting, yeah. apparently. I texted her. Yeah. Rebooting. Rebooting. Oh. Because she froze earlier. Yeah. Okay. Um, we put the action list up there, so. Mm -hmm. Anything on there you wanted to pull off, or are we okay with it? Okay. Uh, just a question the strategic plan yeah. one. Pretty June, quick. It's supposed to be. Pardon me? In June? It's, yeah. It's due. Right. So, it's due. It's due to start, tar um, start talking about it. That, that was my question. Due, because yeah. it's due, it expires 2023. Yeah. So, we need to start thinking about the next. The steps of planning for the next one. So, in that case, with um, probably with getting new board members, and probably do that later yeah, in the year. After that, yeah. See, it's the year that's wrong on here. Yeah. Is it this June? That's this June, yeah. Oh, it's just 2023. Yeah, but it should be this June. We should start talking about it because we'll have to hire most likely. Maybe facilitator. Right. Yeah. It's it's planning it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that public can be engagement is, you know, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, else, we um, invited so we invited council members to the strategic planning process, mm -hmm. and and I, I encourage that because I think it was good because that council understands our concerns and what we're doing and. So mm -hmm. when it comes to budget, there are a lot yeah, more. Yeah, they're more supportive. Yeah. And they ask some good questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Well, in that case, then, you should put it off till November. Is it election year? It's election Already? October. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah. But well, we can uh, start talking about, like, like planning. Yes. yes. Right? Not... So June will say we'll invite. But the, yeah. Yeah, when it'll be and who will invite. Yeah. 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 And who will facilitate all that. All yeah. that stuff can be. Definitely. Planning can happen. So yeah. yeah. Okay, motion to adjourn. So move on. Jane, all in favor? Carrie, thanks very much. All right, Cheryl.